Jesse, you mind ministering to Wayne over there? He looks like he needs a little touch from the, the Lord. Okay. Praise you, Jesus. Interesting, 30, I don't know, 30, 40 years, and I have never shared anything on this parable that I'm going to share today. So praise God. God's been saving it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 18, 1 through 8. That's where we're going we're gonna to go. Uh, let's pray. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, you give us uh, the very best you had so that there would be a way back to you. And so, Father, on this, uh, on this day, Lord, we, we, we give it to you. Lord, this is the Sabbath, and it's all yours. And, Father God, you do with it uh, and with us exactly what you want. Father God, I pray that uh, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost that I would share the things that you'd have me share today. And, Lord, that uh, folks would be inspired uh, God, that we'd be different when we leave here than, than when we came. We'd be encouraged, Lord. And Father God, that we'd be about your calling, your business, your purpose, Father. Propel us, Lord Jesus, into your destiny during these times. We know they're serious, Lord, and we do take them serious. So have your way with us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen, Amen and a women. Luke 18, 1 through 8, I'm going to read uh, here. And... and just for the sake of a word or two that I really want to use, I, I looked at some different uh, translations and some different things, and you know I usually use the New King James or the King James, but in this uh, rare occasion, I'm going to use the, the NIV. So just follow along with me here. Um, you got your own Bible, you can, or you just look at the screen. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Everybody say, don't give up. Don't give up. He said in a, in a certain town. There, now before, I think before I go any further here, I should probably make a, a little sidebar or notation that uh, we, he just got through reading some really tremendous stuff about uh, what's going to happen in his return. And, and they're like in, in shock, and he knows that a shock wave has went out, and all of a sudden he's going to have to, to comfort these disciples and tell them, along with us, some things that, that we need to continue to do. And so here we go, especially in these times. If you're a, if you're a watcher of the, the world, then you know that it's not just the United States that's in all kinds of turmoil. It's all around the whole world. So... Um, just understand that here we are now and we've been studying revelations here on Sunday morning if you're not here you, you, you really can get a, get some ideas about what's going on and what's happening and and the things that are relevant to the times here so it's been really good anybody who wants to come out don't forget 9:45 to 10:30, and you can come here it's, it's uh, you know you don't have to be like you are now we can social distance then because there's not so many folks here but what I want to say is that uh, here Jesus has set them up and he's, he's going to give them a teaching here in this parable. And so here we are. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said in a, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town. She kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary for some time he refused but finally he said to himself even though i don't fear god or care what people think yet because this widow keeps bothering me everybody say bothering me bothering. i will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me and the lord said listen to what the unjust judge says and will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? 
I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will will he find faith on earth? Lord, bless the reading of your your holy word. Now understand that that uh, here's a woman who has exhausted all of her uh, resolution on on her level. And 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 did you know that when when folks exhaust um, every resource that they have on their own level, uh, this is where most people quit. This is where most people give up. And and, uh, and, and so here he is saying, I, I did. Uh, and, and and people usually say something like, I did all that I could, and I give up. If God were meant for me to have this. Uh, uh, this breakthrough, it would have happened. If God would have uh, wanted me to have that house, it would have happened. If God would have wanted me to have that job, it would have happened. But no, 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 no. Not this woman. Not not this woman. Sometimes you you, you got to even let the system know something. Do you know that? Sometimes you got to let the system know that, that hey, you've run over everybody else, but guess what? You're not going to run over me. Amen. And, and we're seeing that happen. We're seeing some Christians, my God, finally standing up for some things and some rights and, and some, some belief system that they have. They're not just rolling over and playing dead. And, and that's encouraging to me. I mean, I was encouraged when, uh, uh, what was it, John MacArthur, pastor out there in California. He takes them to court. They shut him down. And, and guess what? They say, you can't sing in church. You, you can't. No, you can't sing. You, 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 you can't even have church if there's over 10 people. Guess what he did? He went ahead, he went before the judge, and just this week the judge said, it's open. You can do what you want to do. But you know what? People have finally s stood up and said, we need to meet, we need to come together, people need to be ministered to, people need to be loved on, because in this time there's some things happening out there. People are locked up in their house, uh, the, the suicide rate has went up, and drug addiction has went up, drug use, everything is just expanding and blowing up in the name of the devil. So anyhow, uh, and, and sometimes you've got to even let the system know. And, and, and so Jesus is showing us here how, how to fight. When the, when the wind is against you and all hell is breaking loose, though he slay me, yet I shall trust him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so God, God is, God is. Guess what? God's going to work it out. But we got a part to play. And, and Jesus is saying, you, you better bother me till the breakthrough comes. Yeah. You better bother me and bother me and bother me till till the breakthrough comes. Why? If you don't know it right now, you need to know that we are in a fight right now. Yeah. We we are in a fight in this country, and 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 I see it. I see it. It's going to escalate. And if you're sitting there thinking that that it'll never, you know, well, you know what? Things are inside, outside, upside down. Things are never going to happen for me. Uh, it, 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 it's never. I, I'm at a disadvantage. And there are a lot of folks who are at a disadvantage right now. There's no doubt about that. But but I've got news for you that have that attitude. Being a disadvantaged can be an advantage. And so, so let me let me say that disadvantaged people know what it's like to have to fight for a breakthrough. Right. Has anybody ever here had to fight for a breakthrough? Yes. Has anybody here had, had to give it all they got for a breakthrough? Almost want to, you know what? I, and, and here's her here's her enemies are out there and she's she's battling against them, whatever, looking for justice. And I almost want to call my enemies and I want to say thank you. I want to thank you for coming against me. I want to thank you for giving it all you got. Because if I would have got the breakthrough from you, then I would have had to thank you. But guess what? You didn't give me the breakthrough. God gave me the breakthrough. Amen. He's the only one that I have to thank. Amen. He's the only one that I have to say. Thank yeah. you, Lord. So, so now, now I got, I got nobody to thank but God. And, and so you, you have, you have to be tenacious. You, you have to, you, you, you just can't give up. You almost have to be uh, ruthless, and, and so to speak. So, so this judge, I can, I can hear this judge now, and, and, and you can look at it. It's, a, it's like in verses four and five. He's almost saying, I'm gonna paraphrase it. He says, I got to do something about this woman because she's gonna keep bothering me. She's gonna, she, she's not gonna give up. And and here, don't get me wrong. For all the guys in here, oh yeah, for you, buddy. 
you know, Phyllis pointed it out. And then she does that to me. But for all the guys in here, you know, you ask a guy to pray for you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, he's going to he's going to deliver you. I, I just know he is. Lord, Lord, just help them. If they're in trouble, Lord, they're, they're in tremendous trouble. And, and, and how do I know this? Listen. Women are great intercessors and they are great prayer warriors. And well, I know that. How do I know that? Because I, I know that because of 40 years of ministry. And I've watched what men do and I've watched what women do. And, 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 I, and I know all of this. You, you got to ask for, you ask a brother to pray for you and, and he's, a, he's a mumbling through this thing. Okay, and I know because basically that's me. But I want to tell you something. And, and, and if you don't get it from that brother, you know, I, I apologize, it, but you, you don't get it because that's all you're going to get. But if you ask a real woman of faith to pray for you, 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 ask, you ask a real woman of faith to pray for you and she will walk the floor. She will shake her head. My God, she will. Say, the devil is a liar. I can hear my mama right now. The devil is a liar. You can't have my child. Get out of my house. Turn loose of my daughter. I plead the blood of Jesus. She will cry and she will shake her finger and she will give it every. She will clap her hands over you. And, and my mama, you know, I don't, I don't have it here, but I'll tell you what. She, she would bring her prayer cloth out, and Pia can tell you, Leland can tell you. She'll wrap you in that prayer cloth, and I'll tell you what. She'll read every corner of that thing, every healing scripture on that. She did it with Wayne King, time, and he, he loved to come over. Not, not because it had anything going on with my mama. But the truth of the matter was, he, he knew that he could get some prayer. And, when, and he knew the kind of prayer he could get. She'd wrap him up in that prayer cloth and she'd start, oh, da, da, sha, da, ba, so, da, ba, ka, da, ba. And she would go on and on and on. And she would give it everything she had. And, 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 and she would walk around, walk around, walk around him. And she would bombard heaven and tell demons where to go. You know what? She'd, she'd tell them to go to hell. That's what she'd tell them. She'd rebuke witches and warlocks. And hey, many of us are in here today because they had a praying a mama or a grandma or somebody that didn't give up on you that never Amen. quit. And prayed just like that. And this Jesus. Now let's go, let's go somewhere else. Let's talk about the judge here. And this judge who did not fear God nor man because of her persistence guess what he did he broke Be because this fearless woman who did not she didn't have a committee she didn't have a board of directors she didn't have a prayer group she didn't have a prayer chain she didn't have nothing she was one relentless woman and every time he turned around she was there she was right there. Here she comes again. Every time he went to lunch, there she was. Every time that he closed up, she was in the parking lot. She never quit. And every time he, hey, he'd get up to get some coffee and guess what? Oh my God, here she comes again. Little by little, the judge broke. And he says, I, I better do something about this woman. That's right. Why? Why did he have to do something about her? Because she kept bothering him. Bothering him. The scripture here says that she bothered him. And, and, and so this is, this is what, I, what, I, what I want you to understand. Because she bothered him, she moved God. Come on. Now, here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you not to give up. Don't quit. Keep praying. Folks tell me all the time, I, I didn't call you because I didn't want to bother you. Well, I wouldn't have given you my dad gun phone number if I didn't want you to bother me. I, I wouldn't have put it on my cards and they're on the table. Not only mine, but Phyllis's too. I can't tell you how many opportunities that I've lost because I didn't take seriously that somebody, somebody didn't mind me being in their space. Somebody didn't mind. It's all in my head. But this woman, invitation or not, phone number or not, I'm going to bother you till I get a breakthrough. I love that tenacity. And Jesus is teaching his disciples, 
If you're going to pray, bother God. Go ahead. Go for it. Bother Him. And, and, and Phyllis told me the other day we were praying about something and she says, we're, we're going to pray about it in the morning. We're going to pray about it at noon. We're going to pray, pray about it at night. We're going to pray about it while we're driving. And guess what happened? Everybody say we got a breakthrough. We got a breakthrough. We did not give up. Did not give up. Bother him in the waiting room. Bother him in the courtroom. Bother him in the shower. Bother him every chance. God is saying, if you bother me, I will give you justice. My God. How cool is that? You, you can't get justice without persistence. I, I, I don't know what you're fighting. There are different people in here fighting different things. And, 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 and I don't know what's up against you. And I don't know how big a load that some people in here are carrying. But God's saying, bother me. It's okay. I, and I don't know what's keeping you up at night. But God is saying, bother me. I don't know what the enemy is threatening you with. But the Holy Spirit is saying, bother me and use me in the name of Jesus. So God says, cast all your cares on me. Cast them. Why? Because I care for you. Cast all your cares on me. Throw it at my feet. My God, quit being so polite. You're in a fight. We're, we're in a battle. Come on. We're in a battle for not only our lives, but our children's and our grandchildren's and everybody that, that's going to follow us along here in these generations. And if you bother Him, He will deliver you. He will bring you out. He will make a way where there seems like there is no way. He will open a door for you. Bother Him. Can you prove this? Yes, I can. Leave that woman right now for a little while. Let's, let's go down to Egypt. And, and we're not going to go here because it's ten chapters and I'm not going to read them all to you, okay? This is your homework assignment. Read Exodus 2 to 12. Ten chapters there. And, and, and here you're going to find that these folks have been slaves for 400 years. I, I, I read it last night and I said, my God. And, 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 and then and, and, and one, one man, one man that God had appointed to deliver them had run away. Okay? He, and he was living in Jethro's house. But the slaves in Egypt, guess what they kept doing? They kept bothering God. They kept bothering God. They were bothering God. And, and, and they hadn't worshipped God in, in, in hundreds of years. And, and Moses was settled in Midian. And he had a good job. He had a good place. He was doing his own thing. But the Bible says while Moses was taking care of sheep that God appeared to him in a burning bush. And God told him, he said, Moses, Moses, the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. And Moses said to God, why are you bothering me? And God said, I'm bothering you because I heard the cry of the slaves in, in Egypt. Go down there and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I want to go on record here this morning. COVID-19, let your people go. COVID-19. Amen. Folks that are in captivity, God, in the name of Jesus, let God's people go. Amen. Anxiety, let God's people go. Depression, let God's people go. Fear, let God's people go. Worry, my God. Let the Lord's people go. A bunch of slaves praying. A bunch of slaves praying. And, and, and here they were. And these are some, some folks that felt pretty lowly at the time. And God disrupted Moses' life and He sent them to Pharaoh and He said, tell them to let my people go. See, it, it never would have happened. And, and I, I want to go out on a limb and say this. It never would have happened if the slaves would have stopped praying. But God heard their cries. God heard their cries day after day, week after week, year after year. And, 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 and they would have died slaves. They would have never made it to the promised land. But in spite of their lowly position, they used what God gave them. They used what they had. 
They used the prayer to get what they wanted. And because they bothered God, guess what? They delivered Him. Everybody say they delivered them. They delivered them. They delivered them because they kept bothering God. So, so in this pandemic, the, the mindset of the people, I, I, it, it drives me crazy to have to think about this. Yeah, but, but I want to tell you what, we are prisoners in bondage, okay? Come on. We, we are prisoners in bondage to the mindset and to the government. And, and, and so, Lord, Lord, you know what I pray? Lord, use us during this time. What a tremendous time. It's the time of our life that God can use us to do what He's called us to do. To go out and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My God! And we see it happening. Baptize May last week. We're going to baptize somebody here today. People are getting woke up. There's a, even young people, people that you wouldn't imagine are saying, everything is a mess. We got to do something. I said, okay, well, I'm going to bother God. I'm going to start, I'm going to start praying all unceasingly, all day long. And if we do that individually, if we do that corporately, guess what's going to happen? He's going to start, he's going to start hearing. And he's going to start doing. He's going to start setting people free. And you know, we're we're the only folks on earth that have anything to celebrate. That's right. We know what we got a hope and a future that is just tremendous. So hey, we get sick and die. What is the worst thing could happen? Come on. Amen. We have to stay here. We don't get to go and be home with the Lord and, and, and be with loved ones and all of that. Come on, give me a break. We, we, I, I love John David and, and Judy gave me that sign about fear out there. I, we not only put one in front of this place, I put it in front of my house too. Because I, I can't live that way. And I want to tell you what, if you want to live that way, you can. Because guess what you're passing on to everybody you meet? Come on. That same spirit of fear. Amen. If you, you pass on that spirit of fear, I want to tell you what, not only you in trouble, everybody you meet's in trouble too. Because I want to tell you, it's contagious, folks. It's contagious. And, and, and I, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot to say here today. Because I, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. We're going to go about doing what we do. And that's what we're going to do. And until God says no, then that'll be it. Man. Okay? I mean, I don't care. You, you, there's masks up there. we got them every week. You can come in. You can wear them. You can bring them. You can do whatever you want to. And if God's telling you to do that, then do it. But I, I don't know, you know. I mean, there's such a conflicting message out there. What do you believe anyhow? I believe God. I don't want to believe man. So that's it for me. I don't care what men say anymore. And they say, well, what's going to happen? They come put you in jail. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I talked to Billy Wood the other day, and he said, I ain't coming to get you, brother. He said, there's too many guns in that church out there. He, he, he knew that Scott was here. And, and, and so, you, you, know, you know what I want to tell you, folks? I'm fired up. I don't know about you. But I'm fired up to get the good news of the gospel out. To tell everybody I know about this Jesus. And how they can be set free too. And in and, and their minds, in their own minds. And, and in, their, in their walk. And in their talk. And everything. And I, I'm tired of all the negativity. And I'm not going to put up with it. At least that's what Phyllis said. She told me this morning. I don't want to hear no negativity. Come out in the name of Jesus. And, and you know, guess what? It came out. I'm good now. And I'm not. So Lord, I, I, want to, I want to thank you for my wife. And, and I make a public statement here. Uh, how much I care about her. How much she means not only to me, but to this ministry. And uh, are you good? I'm good too. I want to hear something up from up here. I want to hear something, something encouraging, something that. Uh, and you know, I'll tell you, Jace was fired up today, and and uh, you know, we, we want to continue to pray for for Robin um, Friesen. She's coming home with Angel there at Mike and Darlene's church today, in, in Mineola, Texas. But Robin, you know, her, her little uh, baby horse passed away this week while she was out there. And, you know, so her heart's kind of broke over all that. So if you get a chance to text her love on her, uh, write her a note on, on a Facebook Messenger or something. And uh, 
But hey, I, you know, I, I, I told her the other day, I talked to her, I said, listen, let me tell you something. The enemy's not going to have a place in this. Okay? And I want to tell you what, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is going to provide something better than what you had. I know He is, because that's the way He works. He's got something waiting in the wings. And she believes that too. We need to believe with her. Amen? Amen. Amen. The altar's open. We're going to move outside and baptize. And uh, if you'd like to come out and join us, you are welcome. I come to garden alone Where the dew is still on the rose And the voice I hear